Joey L., amazing photographer, and I interviewed him. He told me that really how he learned photography was looking at the works of the master painters and noticing how they framed the photograph, but also their use of lighting. So he, you can see this looks almost like a painting back here, doesn't it? And his lighting is phenomenal. He carries a portable generator with him and some soft boxes and some lighting, LEDs probably now, to augment. So you can see there's, there's pretty good light on this subject here, but it falls off and the background gets darker. But he learned that from looking at the works of the painters. And that's how you strengthen your visualization muscles, as we call it. Go out and look at art and ideally look at it in a museum. If you can't go to a museum, look at it in a book. If you don't have photography books and you don't have a library where you can check them out or even a bookstore handy, you can go online, but that's the last choice. It's way better to look at the actual art hanging on the wall or print it in a book because you're going to be much closer to what that artist really had in mind for you. So when you look at it, take your notebook, which I recommend that you have, and we've got lots of notebooks around here. I use notebooks constantly. This is our actual AYP official notebook. Um, and make notes of what, it, what you see in that work of art. How was the subject composed within the frame? You can even draw a sketch. And then you want to look at how were they lit? Where was the light coming from? I showed you Joey L. The light was coming. Obviously, there was light, you know, in the environment, but he had a lighting source in front of the subject as well. You can see that. You can look at it. And that's going to help you tune into light, which is part of capturing, is knowing where the light is coming from. And then... Where is your eye drawn to? Because that's really important. Like there's a lot of places your eye could go, but where does that artist pull your eye first to? Where do you enter that painting or photograph? Very important. Take note of that because you don't want your eye bouncing around all over the place. You want it to be drawn to a certain point. And that's going to be in your notes as well. And then finally, what's your emotional impact? How does it impact you emotionally? What do you feel when you look at that work of art? And when I say work of art, I'm including music, painting, photography, films, sculpture. Any one of those things can inspire you as a photographer. I'm generally thinking of it either as something you hear or you or you see visually, but it could be writing as well. I've gotten inspired by authors to go out and photograph what they're writing about. So these are really important points, you guys. You, you, I'm just going to encourage you right now. You got to practice these things. They don't just jump out at you. You got to put in the hard work and strengthen your visualization muscles. This is an excellent example of Vermeer and his painting of the milkmaid we go through this exercise. So first of all, how did he frame his subject? Well, you notice it's pretty tight. There's not a lot of excess going on here. He leaves this one little cheese grater, I think it is, over here on the floor. But it's all really about the subject right here and the, the various things that surround her. The light source is easy. Vermeer used one window, north-facing window, the light is coming in. You'll notice that wherever the window hits, you've got a lit up part of her on this side. It's in shade, which is exactly how that window worked. It's very much like a photograph, isn't it? I mean, the realism of this. And then what's your emotional impact? What do you feel when you look at this? I get a feeling of sort of calmness, like she's just going about her business. Things are arranged in a kind of a nice, even way. She seems to be focused on her job. Who knows? Maybe she's contemplating something else. But she seems to be in the moment there. But I also kind of get the feeling like Mona Lisa, 
that there's something else maybe going on with this expression. There's a little bit of a mystery. Maybe she's preoccupied. Maybe she's a slightly bit worried about something. So it leaves me asking a question, which is a really powerful tool because people get drawn into these things where they don't really know the answer. But I recommend you study Vermeer. I recommend you study Rembrandt. I recommend you study Andy Warhol. <laughs> I recommend that you study a lot of different works of art. And I'm going to show you some of my favorites here. Some of the books that have inspired me are this book called The Family of Man. You can get it on Amazon. I think it's out of print, but it's a phenomenal book, all black and white photographs taken by, I forget the number of photographers. I think it's 500. All around the world, they put these together in 68 countries, as I recall. And it was curated by uh, Edward Steichen, a really fantastic photographer. And there's a prologue by Carl Sandburg, the amazing poet. I really recommend this to you guys because you're going to learn a lot about black and white photography around the world. And this was definitely an inspiration for me as a very, very young photographer. Arnold Newman is one of my favorite photographers. He's the one that, that really coined this idea of environmental portraiture, which is basically you're photographing somebody in their environment not in a, in a studio setting. Like for instance, this is Martha Graham, the famous dancer. She's in a dance studio. Now I really want to point out the, the use of the rule of thirds here, right? Notice how he adhered to these rules. Not. <laughs> this is an important point because there are no rules of thirds or any other rules. There's guidelines. And fortunately he didn't follow the, that at all. He has his own way of composing and quite often will put the subject on the far side of the frame. Leaves a lot of space, leaves a lot of negative space, which really calls attention to that subject. So I recommend this book to you. I've, I've been inspired by it many, many times. This photograph I just think is phenomenal. Look at how he had the subject hang his glasses off his ear. Now maybe that's how the subject customarily wore the glasses, I don't know. But I think it's really clever and it draws your eye. So this is Arnold Newman Masterclass. You can also get that on Amazon. Jared, we should probably put links so we get credit for this. One way you can support AYP is buy stuff through our Amazon link. I'm not kidding. This is another one I really love, the Masterworks of Modern Art. And this is from the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And it's all types of art paintings, photographs. This is Salvador Dali, an amazing photographer, photographer, amazing painter. That would be pretty incredible if he were a photographer. Pablo Picasso. You know, I'm not, I'm equally inspired by painting as I am with photography. Just seeing things, you know, you go through here and you get an idea and you say, you know, that could help me with my photography. Does that make sense, you guys? I'm just giving you three. I got a lot of other books. But we'll put links in the description so you guys can click on it and, and use our Amazon. It does give us credit. We, we really appreciate it whenever you do that. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it. And leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.